Hello, welcome to 10th episode of Neuroanatomy. We were learning about peripheral nervous system and in this video we will continue that topic. As I told you that there are 12 cranial nerves and 31 spinal nerves. The formation of every cranial nerve is unique. So we will be discussing every nerve in detail in a separate video that is dedicated to that particular nerve. But the formation of spinal nerve throughout the length of spinal cord is similar. So let's check it out. In this picture, this is a spinal nerve because before this area is a forming spinal nerve and after this area, there is a dividing spinal nerve. So just this area is proper spinal nerve. These are motor fibers emerging from spinal cord. As motor fibers are used to convey the message from brain to body, so they are called descending fibers, means they are coming from the brain to the body, means away from the brain. So anything that is going away from an organ is called efferent. So these are efferent fibers and they are also called ventral fibers. What do you mean by ventral? If you stand in front of me, your face will be my side. So anything in your body that is on my side is ventral and which is in opposite side that is dorsal. However, in animals, ventral is used for anything underside or anything to the abdominal side. So till here we are clear that these are efferent fibers, these are motor fibers and these are ventral fibers. Ventral also means anterior, so these are anterior fibers. Now, if they are fibers, they must be fibers of some neurons. And in the case of motor neurons, there are some upper motor neurons and there are some lower motor neurons. Motor neurons found in the cortex of the brain are called upper motor neurons and the, and the motor neurons that are found in brain stem and spinal cord are called lower motor neurons. Now neurons from cortex of brain that are called upper motor neurons send the signal to the lower motor neurons that are found in spinal cord. For example, say this is body of lower motor neuron in spinal cord. So fibers of lower motor neurons will make ventral root of spinal cord or motor root of spinal cord. However, it is not that simple but for understanding purpose, just be with me. So till here we broke the nut of ventral root. Now come to the dorsal root. Dorsal root as the name suggests is posterior root. Its fibers are efferent fibers because they are sensory fibers so they are going from body to the brain so they are called efferent fibers. So the dorsal root is posterior, sensory and have efferent fibers. And keep in mind one more thing that these roots have both somatic and visceral fibers. Somatic fibers are those fibers that carry the information about muscle and joints. And visceral fibers are those fibers that conduct the message from organs. If they are motor, they will be called somatic efferent or visceral efferent. If they are sensory, they will be called somatic efferent and visceral efferent. So the sensory signals go to the brain, they do not originate into the brain. They originate into spinal nerves. This is spinal ganglion, also referred as dorsal root ganglion. It is the collection of neuronal cell bodies of sensory neurons. Because cell bodies of first order sensory neurons are not in the spinal cord, but they are in sensory root ganglion. Neurons that initiate the signal in sensory nerves are called first order neurons as the neurons that initiate signals in motor nerves are called upper motor neurons. They are pseudo unipolar neurons. I have explained all the types of neurons in lecture 5 so you can see if you want to you will get the video in Neuroanatomy playlist. Okay back to the topic. Pseudo-unipolar neurons consist of cell body that has short axon that bifurcates into two processes. One process go to the targeted organ and one process go to the spinal cord. These first order sensory neurons terminate in the spinal cord and, and here is what second order sensory neurons initiate. They have cell bodies in spinal cord and they carry signals from spinal cord to thalamus. Second order sensory neurons terminate into thalamus and the third order sensory neurons have cell bodies in thalamus and they carry signal to the somatosensory portion of the brain. Now ventral and dorsal fibers join to make ventral and dorsal roots and these both roots join to make spinal nerve. 
Now, after formation of spinal nerve, spinal nerve splits into dorsal ramus and ventral ramus. Both the rami have motor and sensory fibers. The red fibers are from ventral root means motor fibers and blue fibers are from dorsal root means sensory fibers. I hope I am clear till here. We will continue the journey of neuroanatomy. Till the next video, Khuda Hafiz.